All right, all right. This is Renita from Essie's Delights and who's ready to bake? And guess what we're baking today? A cheesecake. And a cheesecake is an act of love because it takes time to make a cheesecake. Yes. It takes time, it's an act of love, and Essie's Cheesecakes is a whole experience from the top to the bottom because my crust is like no other. So get ready for pie cheesecake. All right, let's get started. So first off, when I'm doing the apple pie cheesecake, I have to soak my apples that's gonna be baked on top and I usually use three to four apples. So I'm just gonna peel it over here. This is a potato peeler. These are, I usually use honey crisp apples, Gala or Fuji or jazz apples. I think these ones were Gala. Actually, I like local grown, but I couldn't find none of those in the store and I wasn't going to no orchard. So after you have peeled them, I have an apple slicer and you just put it over the core, go down, bam, easy. Do your next one. See how juicy that apple is? That juice came splashing up. And because these got nice sized chunks, we are gonna cut these in half. So now that I have the apples sliced in half again, I am going to pour in a cup of sugar. I got a half a cup of white sugar and a half a cup of dark brown sugar. I also have apple pie spice. Just put it in there. It's gonna make juices overnight. I'm going to use some cinnamon, however much you want. You're going to put, I use a drop or two of lemon juice to help the browning of the apples. Make sure you have a bowl that has a top because we're going to shake. Make sure the sugar and stuff it's all incorporated real good with the apples. Yes. And once it's all mixed together, we're just gonna sit this in the fridge for a few hours. I personally do mine overnight, so. So now that we got our apples, prepped and marinating in the cinnamon and apple spice and white and brown sugar. Let's talk about this crust of the cheesecake. Normally people only use graham cracker for cheesecake for the crust. I am the flavor queen and I get my name because I do things differently. I do combinations of flavors. So that's why my crust is different than everybody else's. For this particular pie, we are going to use apple pie, ginger snaps, combined with shortbread cookies. I like Walker's brand. You can buy any brand. I just like that brand. And I'm gonna grind these up in my Ninja here. I am gonna use some graham cracker. But again, I'm using a combination of cookies for my crust. So 
So we have shortbread, we have apple ginger snap, and we are going to have graham crackers in this crust here. So let's grind this up a little bit and we're gonna put some more in there. I use a ninja, you can you see, I told y'all cheesecake making it is an act of love. And you're gonna need a stick of butter, which we're gonna melt down and we're gonna put our cookie crumb on the inside and we're gonna make it like sand. And we're gonna bake that um, in an eight by three inch cake pan, eight by three inch. This is a Wilton brand, eight by three inch. Um, I know people are wondering, oh, but it's not a cheesecake spring pan where you can just easily release. I will show you how to get your cheesecake out the pan um, the proper way. So again, we're gonna bake our cheesecake in an eight by three inch cake pan. I, this is a Wilton brand. You can use any brand that you find as long as it's an eight by three inch deep. And you're gonna need a piece of parchment paper, okay? So that's the crust piece. Get ready, we're gonna melt our butter I'll show you how to put it in here. We're gonna bake it in the stove on 325 for at least 15 minutes. That'll give us time to mix up the actual cheesecake filling. Okay. You also need, I add a tablespoon of white sugar and a tablespoon of raw sugar. I'm not sure if you know what that is, but this is raw sugar. So a tablespoon of white sugar and a tablespoon of raw sugar. I'm gonna add um, a few graham crackers. You want enough, at least two cups of shredded cookies, graham crackers, or whatever you're gonna use for your crust, at least two cups. More is better, but two cups if you have two cups. So let me. All right, so let's talk about the actual filling for the cheesecake, the ingredients. Of course, we know we need cream cheese and you're gonna use four blocks, four eight ounce blocks is blocks of cream cheese. This is Philadelphia brand. If you're in an area that has Lando Lakes um, extra creamy cream cheese, it is really good in making cheesecake as well as Philadelphia. Not to say that the store brand or is not as good. I just prefer Philadelphia or the Lando Lakes extra creamy cream cheese brand for my cheesecakes. You will also need um, heavy cream, not heavy whipping cream, but actually heavy cream. I have to point that out. Heavy cream, not heavy whipping cream. Um, along with sugar, cornstarch, sour cream, two eggs, and everyone who's been watching my videos, um, I use vanilla bean paste, and I am a Lorraine Oils fan a fan of the oils and the emulsions. And you'll need cinnamon oil and apple flavor. So as our pie crust is baking in the stove on 325 for at least 15 to 20 minutes or until you start smelling the aroma of your pie crust, then you know it's ready to come out. Um, we can mix up the cheesecake filling because it's less than 10 to 15 minutes. It shouldn't take you no more than 10 to 15 minutes to mix this up. And we don't want our cream cheese at room temperature again. Okay, I'm gonna tell y'all a secret of mine. I'm giving y'all all my tips and tricks. So since the apples are already marinating overnight in the cinnamon and sugar, I always put my oils, whatever flavorings I'm using, I soak it well, not soak, but I just let it marinate overnight in my heavy cream. So again, 
This is what I do. You don't have to, but it just gets that flavor really inside of this heavy cream. Right now, we getting down to the good part. We getting ready to make our crust, but I wanted to say, if you have a stove thermometer, cause everybody's stove is different. And sometimes you think it's, you have it set at 325 and it's really cooking at 320 or 330, 345. The only way to really know what your stove is at, use um, a stove thermometer from time to time. So if you have one, let's preheat our oven to 325 and put this in just to make sure that your stove is registering correct stove is registering correct but right now we are getting ready to melt a stick of butter because we're going to need that for our crust so i told you earlier that we're going to bake this cheesecake in an eight by three inch cake pan and you needed a piece of parchment paper which we're going to place in the bottom but we are going to spray our pan real good. Get this out the way. We we'll spray the, the pan around real good. Your parchment paper, we're just gonna put in the bottom. Our crust here. Put it in your pan and we are going to smash it around to the bottom. See how I'm just smashing it? I kind of leave my flat. Some people bring their crust up the side so It'd be like a casing for the cheesecake, but I just like it to be at the bottom of mine. So, it'd be what you like. See? And now we're gonna bake this for 15 to 20 minutes or until we smell the aroma on 325. But while this is baking, we're gonna start the actual cheesecake filling. All right, so we got our butter melted and I'm gonna be moving the position of my phone around so you will be able to see what I'm doing. But I have my butter melted and we got our cookie cookie combination that we grind it for our crust. So I'm just gonna take this. I said you needed about two cups. You can use two cups to two and a half cups. It's just depending on how thick you want your crust to be on the bottom of your cheesecake. And let me put on my gloves here. All right. So we got our melted butter and our cookie crumbles, and we are going to mix it together till it's, look at it, all incorporated. Real quick, incorporated. I think I'm gonna put some more crumbs in mine. Soak it all up. All right, so I am a lefty. So if you see me trying to get myself right from time to time, that's why. We are gonna use the paddle attachment. And so first we're gonna take, I'm always trying to be ahead of time, uh, well prepared actually. So I already cut up my cheesecake into squares and we're first going to take one of the blocks of cheesecake cut up add it into the bowl along with your cornstarch and your sugar and we're going to let that um, get incorporated for a minute or so i have mine just on stir right now with the first 
cream cheese. And as you can see, as it get incorporated, it's all incorporated. For a minute or so, no more than two minutes, minute, minute and a half, start adding the other one. Your other cream cheese. This should take you no more than 10 minutes to mix up. And this will start shaking. So don't be scared if that happens. As you add in, it'll get clumped up, but I'm going to turn it off in a minute and try and wipe down the sides. So I have all four. See how it's bouncing around? I'm gonna have to get these gloves off and put on some new ones. Turn it off so I can wipe it down for a minute. Wipe down the blades. Let it mix. I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna wipe down my sides again. And because this paddle don't go all the way to the bottom, that's why I be going, digging down in to make sure that it's all getting mixed and incorporated good. All right, see how it's not as thick no more and it's smoothing out getting all creamy wipe down these blades now i'm gonna take my sour cream and i'm gonna fold it in See, it's all creamy. See? See how creamy it is? No chunks. turn it back on too because I'm going to slowly add in the heavy cream. I should have used my shield but that's why I have these disposable counter liners. And you just mix this. Oh my gosh, I smell them apples. They smell so good. There you go. All right, so we have our crust that is done. While it is hot, we are gonna take our filling over here and we're gonna put it inside on top of our hot crust. Smooth it around.
smooth it around. Let's get all of our filling out of here. Take your spatula, smooth it around. Okay, now that we got our cheesecake filling in, remember those apples from yesterday? I told you to marinate them. So now, you see the juices? that it made and we're gonna save this reserve juice because that's what I'm gonna to use to make the brown sugar glaze that's gonna go over top of this. Now you're just gonna take your apples and you're just gonna lay them around here. And we used, what did we do? I cut up three, no, I cut up four apples for this. Okay, so now that we have our apples all laid around, this right here, you need a half sheet um, aluminum pan or just a deep pan. These are just a dollar or 50 cent, depending on what dollar store you go to, because we're getting ready to do a water bath. And with the water bath, we're just going to take our cheesecake, we're gonna sit it down in our pan and you're gonna pour, that's why I had this picture of water. Make sure the water does not get inside of your cheesecake and we just wanna fill this pan up a little over halfway. A little over halfway to the top. And then we are going to bake this in the stove for 75 to 85 minutes. It depends on how hot your stove gets. You know your stove, so that's why I say a range from 75 to 85 minutes. And once that time is up, you turn off the stove and leave this cheesecake in the stove for two hours. Do not open the stove. So we're gonna put this in right now and I'm gonna do mine for 85 minutes. And once the 85 minutes is up, I'm gonna turn off my stove and I'm just gonna leave it in the stove for two hours without opening the stove at all. So now that we have our cheesecake in the reserve juice that was on our apples, we're just gonna save it in a container because we need that to make the brown sugar glaze for the topping. And we have all these apples left. You can eat them as a snack. Okay, so we are back 
our cheesecake has cooked for 75 to 85 minutes as well as sitting in the stove for two hours without the oven door being open. So I am going to take it out of the water bath now. And you see, no cracks. No cracks in the top, all smooth. That is the purpose of the water bath. So it can cook evenly and heat properly and it allows for no cracks in your top and no shrinkage on the side. So I'm gonna sit that there and I am going to move this out the way. And I am going to just wipe the bottom off and I'm just gonna show you how I wrap the cheesecake to freeze because I freeze my cheesecakes. I use cling, press and seal, and foil. So I'm just going to first put a layer of cling across the top. And I'm gonna follow that up by some press and seal. it the right way I'm just locking in my moisture locking in my moisture and then followed by a layer of foil And this is gonna go into the freezer. You freeze it overnight or until you're ready to dress it. So we are gonna allow this to freeze and then I will do another video to show you how I'm going to do the brown sugar glaze that's gonna go on top. And I have to show you the process of getting the cheesecake out of this pan. And we're gonna use the same method actually with that silver pan we're going to boil some hot water but we'll do all that in the next video so thank you for watching so far on how to make this apple pie cheesecake and i hope you have enjoyed the process so far but we got a little bit more to do in order to complete it okay so the trick to getting our frozen cheesecake out of this pan we have to boil some hot water so get a medium sized pot and just fill it up and we're going to get it to boil and now our water is at the right well i ain't gonna say temperature because i ain't sticking no thermometer in there but you can see that it's boiling hot and we're going to take this and we're going to transfer it into our half sheet pan or whatever deep pan you're going to use to actually take your cheesecake out from okay okay so our water should be boiled now well our water is boiled now so now we're getting ready to take this cheesecake out of this eight by three inch cake pan and finish it up with our brown sugar glaze that we made so let's go let's do this let's do this so remember i told you that we was gonna need a half sheet steaming pan or some type of deep roasting pan, whichever your choice is to use to place your hot water in to release your cake pan. So I hope you also have that ready also. All right, be very careful. You see the steam is rising. This water is extremely hot. So we are only gonna need to sit this cheesecake in this pan for, I wouldn't even say five minutes, two to three minutes, because this is boiling hot. We're just gonna unwrap our cheesecake.
you will have a little bit of ice crystals on top. You can just remove those off. I'm going to get this out the way. I'm going to put on my gloves. And I'm just gonna pick off these little ice crystals and throw them to the side. And that's just moisture from the top of the cheesecake when we put it in the freezer, that build up. And we are just gonna carefully sit this cheesecake in this hot water for between two, to five minutes. All right, let's, so let's see if we are ready to release this out. This is extremely hot, so please be careful. I have a regular dishcloth on the side that I'm gonna sit it on as I lift it out so I can just wipe down the sides a little. I'm gonna move this hot water out the way because I do not want to burn myself. And now we are going to see if it's ready to release. You need a eight inch cake board and we're gonna use a circular plate so what I'm gonna do now is just take my plate, and this is my turntable in a Teco turntable. I use it for my cake spread. I'm gonna use it today for this also. So let's see if our cheesecake is ready. So we're just gonna place it on our plate here. And you're going to just lift to see if it's ready to come out. If you have left it in the hot water long enough, it will just easily release. But I purposely did not leave it in the whole five minutes because I wanted to show you another method that people um, use. This is a blowtorch. So if your cheesecake isn't easily releasing once you take it out, but you know what? Ours did. So my water was hot enough. See how it's just coming out? I don't even need the cheese, the blowtorch. Released. See how easy that was? Our parchment paper. And now we're gonna take our cake board here. We're going to flip it over and here you go your cheesecake. See, that was simple to take out, right? A boiling pot of hot water, a half steam pan, sit it in there for a few minutes, flip it over, bam, your cheesecake is out. Easy breezy frozen cheesecake release from an eight by three inch cake pan. So now we get to do the last part and that's put that brown sugar drizzle on top. See that crust? See, I told you I, I like, when I said people press all the way up, some people can press their crust all the way up the sides. I just like mine on the bottom. You see how much cheesecake you got there? This is gonna be delicious, delicious. All right, so who's ready to drizzle? We got our brown sugar glaze, and this glaze, if you didn't let it cool off, it's still gonna be a little bit hot. But as you can see, I took the foil that I had wrapped this cheesecake in and just covered up my turntable to, it will collect the excess drip, brown sugar glaze drip, because now I'm just gonna go across with my drizzle.
I did it that way. I'm gonna turn the table a little bit. This stuff is hot. And I'm just gonna go across like this. This stuff is hot. So let me put a... I don't got my cotton gloves near me. So I'm just gonna wrap this in a napkin. Just dripping across, dripping across, dripping across, dripping across. And there you got, and there you have your apple pie cheesecake with brown sugar glaze. Yummy. Can you say yummy with me? Yummy. Delicious. Yummy. Brown sugar glaze. Apple pie cheesecake. But we're going to store this in the fridge. Of course, everybody knows cheesecake needs to be stored in the fridge. But when you cut this cheesecake, and we're cutting the cheesecake cold, not at room temperature. You should also have a cup of hot water beside you with a nice sharp blade. And in between each cut, you dip that knife in that hot water, clean it a little bit, and do your cut. And you'll get nice, sliced, clean cheesecake cut. So thank you so much for watching and going through this whole process with me on making this apple pie cheesecake with brown sugar glaze. I do hope you enjoy it just as much as my family does. So share, comment below, subscribe, and have others watch too. Thank you. This is Ray, the flavor queen from Essie's Delights. Until the next time. All right, so although we didn't have to use the blowtorch that I was going to tell you all about because my hot water was boiling temperature, so it was hot enough to release that cheesecake from the pan without the blowtorch. But if it hadn't been hot enough, once we had that cheesecake turned over on that glass plate, you would have just taken your little blowtorch here, light it, and you just would have took it around the top of the pan like this. Just turn the turntable around and put a little bit of fire to the bottom and the sides so it can easily release. So that's just another tip and trick. And this is just a blowtorch. Um, you can get these offline anywhere. I have this one, which I bought from Bed Bath & Beyond maybe four or five years ago for $19.99 so it's really inexpensive and you also can have it for when you want to do some meringue so a hey, multi-purpose cake decorating tools